TCI is brought to you by Spendthrift Stallion Line of David, a grade one winner from the family of Mr. Prospector. Watch for his first two-year-olds in 2014. Welcome back to TCI, your inside track to the Triple Crown. Alongside Joel Cunningham, I'm John Siegel. Well, Joel, we have a lot to talk about, so let's jump right in. And let's go ahead and recap the Risen Star at Louisiana. You know, no surprise here. We see Starlight Stables with another good son of Harlan's Holiday. Joel, the course I'm talking about, Intense Holiday. Tell me a little bit about his race in the Risen Star. Well, he kind of had that breakthrough performance that he had been hinting at. You know, wasn't a very precocious two-year-old, John. He's a big colt, big, beautiful son of Harlan's Holiday clearly has developed into that frame and gotten better as the distances increased. And certainly Gulfstream may not have been his track. I thought he ran well in the Holy Bull and he galloped out well, but this was his breakthrough race. A little less competition, in my opinion, with a legitimate track in terms of his style coming from off the pace, that long stretch, having the real chance to win a race. So we go now to the Twin Spires TV race replay. And the pace in this race didn't shape up. You know, yeah. uh, when you look at the favorite here, Vickers in trouble, you see him here trying to fire off a stalking trip. I don't think he got the distance. They tried to stalk with him. I thought it'd be more of a pace presence. Rise up, broke flat-footed for Tom Amos. So Albano got an easy lead from his rail draw, set a very sensible pace in here, and that's why he kept going. You had to really appreciate the late run here from Intense Holiday. I mean, he just gobbles up the ground. Mike Smith times it out perfectly. So now Intense Holiday with a breakthrough win. And I tell you what, he's got a brisnet number. is very healthy in here, 99. Gallops out well there. You see his ears up. Yep. He's going to be a big player now in the Louisiana Derby. And, John, we talked about last week, he just keeps getting a little better, a little better. Next thing you know, you look up, he wins a major prep like this, and now he's in the driver's seat in the Louisiana division right now. All right, let's go to South Florida, and I want to talk about an allowance race that was on the undercard for the Fountain of Youth. Joel, there was a lot of good horses in here. You thought Constitution would run well. He did, but not just him. There's another horse you were pretty high on. Yeah, I thought it was a great field all around. I mean, it really was. But the way that track's playing right now, I mean, Constitution has some true brilliance, John. I mean, he made the lead so effortlessly in here. Really, he broke a step slow again, but just his natural cruising speed put him on the lead. Javier never asked him to go the lead. If we go to the Twin Spires race replay, we'll look at the stretch run. Once he got away with 24 and 1, open quarter. I knew it was over at that point. He had yeah. an easy lead. Toneless, a big colt here. You see how much bigger Toneless is. He actually tried to stalk, and he's more of a late closer. I thought both colts ran well, considering that probably wasn't Toneless style of race. But you see Constitution here just wins very easily under the wire here, John. They came home the last two and a half furlongs faster than the Fountain of Youth. And I think both these Colts had something left, particularly Constitution. I think he, I think he won with a little something left. So uh, really checked a big box for me in that race going two turns, even though it was an easy race for him. I like the way he did it. And I think going forward in his third start in the Florida Derby, He's a major talent. He is a big-time player now in that Florida Derby division. All right, well, let's talk about the Fountain of Youth to prep for the Florida Derby. Joel, you know, we saw a lot of good horses in here, but this track, like you said, has really been playing kind of strange. Tell me a little bit about the race, and tell me about Commissioner's trip in here as well. Well, you talked about the track. I mean, they just are not backing up, John, and it really doesn't even matter how fast or contested the pace is, I think, at this point. Closers are at a severe disadvantage right now over that track at Gulfstream, and we're just seeing it race after race, it seems, unless you're groupie doll and you're just so much the best, you can come from way off of and circle the field. And we're seeing that, again, when you look at the Fountain Youth, we'll go now to the Twin Spires TV race replay, and they set a better pace in here than Constitution's race. We saw 2346. It's a pretty solid pace, 110 and change, but you see your two favorites in here, Wildcat Red, the two one-two finishers of the Gulfstream Park Derby, and General A-Rod, the horse that I thought could win this race, they're finishing 1-2 in here, and I thought top billing ran a huge race. I mean, he came from dead last and only got beat two lengths. I know they weren't flying home, but over that track, it was reminiscent to me of Orb in some of his races where he was coming way off of it, really wasn't getting the pace scenario, was, really wasn't playing to the track last year. So I really like top billings running there. I think he can be a big player going forward when the distances increase, particularly when he gets off the Gulfstream Park surface. But the, the risk for top billing is, and the risk, risk for a lot of these horses, Constitution, a lot of the horses in the top 10 now, they need the points. Right. They need to run huge or they're not going to make it in the Derby. And that kind of goes hand in hand anyway. I mean, if you don't run big in your final major prep, you're not good. You, you really don't belong in the Derby. So top billing needs a big final race out of there. The one, two finishers, again, how far is Wildcat Red going to go? He doesn't crack in the top 10 for us because I don't think he's a true distance type horse. General A-Rod, he had every chance to go by. He did not do it. You mentioned Commissioner. Yeah. 
he was a little more forward, saving ground on the rail. It wasn't really his type of race setup, wasn't really his type of track, but he definitely faded late in there, and you have to wonder about his prospects now on the Derby Trail. Well, I wonder, too, if, if they'll go ahead and try to switch tracks, since this, this track is clearly, you know, playing to, to speed. So, be interesting to see what they do with him. Let's take a look yeah. now at the TCI Top 10, and let's see how this weekend shook out and see where, where everybody lands. You know, I see here the top five really didn't change at all. So let's go ahead and look at six through ten real quick. Top billing stays in number one for me, though. Okay. I, I liked his third place. Even, even in a third place finish. Yes. You know, I see here uh, we got some newcomers onto the list, but I want to talk about Samurai here. You got him in at number eight. Joel, it's a perfect transition, really, to move into the Gotham Stakes, which is running this weekend. Sure. And we see a rematch here between him and Uncle Cy. Tell me, you really think it comes down to those two horses? again? Well, they were in the match race last time out. You know, if you can recall uh, when they ran in the Withers last time out, John, I mean, they just totally left the field. They both were clicking off 12 second furlongs and really Uncle Si had the rail and the pace uh, position and you saw Samrod stalking him was able to, I thought, overtake him pretty easily. But then he finished on his wrong lead. To me, he was extremely green. I think he had something in the tank. I mean, I look at Sam Rod. I think there's a ton of talent there. A lot of people look at that pedigree and want to write him off and say, well, I'm not so sure how far this, this New York bread's going to go. But being by Noble Causeway, a horse that had a ton of stamina, John, I look at this colt, he's well put together. He has a beautiful balanced stride. He's light on his feet. I think there's a lot more in the tank for this horse. And I really expect another big performance in here where he's going to face the best group he's faced yet to date. Yeah. But I think Sam Rott has some serious upside. That's why I got him in number eight in our top ten. Well, he's got a horse that's shipping in from Tampa last time out. He was second into Sam Davis. He's going to ship up. And, of course, that's Harpoon, another tap it with a lot of speed. Yeah, absolutely. And Har Harpoon, if you listen to Clockers down there at Palm Meadows, they love this cold. I mean, he, he just breathes his lights out every time he goes to the track, but he's a half to a couple sprinters. So I think they strategically placed him in here because it's at a mile and a 16th. They want to see him win around two turns before maybe they take the mile and an eighth experiment. Uh, breaking from the outside, he should come from slightly off the pace or stock. Be interested to see what the tactics are. I mean, in trouble coming off the layoffs, undefeated. A ton of speed. You know he has to go from the rail. You have Uncle Cy who has a ton of speed in here. You know Uncle Cy is probably going to set just his basic cruising speed. He's going to be very forwardly placed, and I expect Harpoon and Sam Rott maybe to stalk that pair. And I think your winner is going to come from the stalking group. It's either going to be Sam Rott or Harpoon, and we're going to find out. I think Harpoon has enough class, enough talent to push Sam Rott to at least give us a gauge of how good he is. Can he put Harpoon away and really show some power in the stretch, show that he belongs in the top ten? All right, one more race to talk about before I let you go. And I know, Joel, usually the swale, you're not real big on this for a derby prep because it's really more of a sprint-type prep. But we right. see Havana making his three-year-old debut in here. Tell me, what do you think about this Colts' chances? That's what makes it important to talk about. Havana breaking from the rail in here. He was such a good two-year-old, and he's by Dunkirk who can run all day. So you, you still give him some, even though he's so brilliant, you want to give him a chance to you know, rectify and you know, s show that he can be a classic-type Colt because he looked more like a sprinter as a two-year-old. So I look at Van in here, and I think it's an important comeback race, John. He has a stable mate, No Name Never, who's a super quick horse, probably going to get the lead on him. Havana breaking from the rail. He might can try to go the lead and duel with this horse and win this one race. It's not going to help him in the future. Right. I think they might take him back in here. Hmm. Maybe try a stalking trip, set him up for his next time out, which you know could be somewhere like the Arkansas Derby maybe. So very interesting to see how Havana runs and how they manage him in his comeback and if they try to keep him on the Derby trail. All right, thank you, Joel. Thank yep. you guys for watching. Make sure you come back next week. We'll recap these races and see how the TCI Top 10 shakes out.